Hi everybody, today we will be building the Deluxe Bird Feeder. Hi everyone, my name is John. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be building the Deluxe Bird Feeder. Feel free to follow along and pause, rewind, or even skip parts as needed. All the different steps are split into chapters found in the video timeline. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment just to talk about the importance of safety. When we work with or around tools, we need to be very careful to show respect for potential hazards and take our work very seriously. Safety glasses must be worn. You only get two eyes and these will make sure you get to keep them. Building stuff is fun, but if we get hurt, the fun is over. So please have fun, but take safety seriously. Let's talk about the tools you'll need to complete this project. Again, remember, we're gonna need our safety glasses. We'll also need a hammer. That's for hitting those nails. The next thing you're gonna need is some glue. It's also helpful to have something to spread the glue. I have a popsicle stick here. You can use a paintbrush or even your finger. The other thing I need is somewhere to put that glue. It makes it easier to take the glue off and get it on your piece of wood. I'm gonna use a paper towel. We'll need that. Finally, we'll need a screwdriver. This screwdriver right here, it's a Phillips, and you can tell it is because the tip looks like a plus sign, or even maybe a star. And that's it. Those are the tools we'll need to complete the project. All right, let's get some glue ready. The glue is what helps hold together your wood for the long term. The nails are only there to help hold together that wood until the glue dries. Let's start with step one. We need to use nails and glue to attach the base to one of the sides, creating our first dado joint. This cutout right here runs through the inside of both sides of the bird feeder. It is called a dado cut. When we place and attach our base inside this cut, we create a special type of wood joint called a dado joint. So let's go ahead and get our glue on. First, I'm going to put some glue inside this dado cut. Let's make sure we get our glue everywhere it needs to be. It is very important to be able to secure your work properly. So if you have difficulty with this, you can have a friend help you or even use a clamp. You'll notice that when looking at your wood, we've got some pre-drilled holes for your nails. These are just there so you know exactly where to put your nail. And also, it helps to start your nail so you can protect your fingers when swinging the hammer. So let's get that first one in. Let's quickly just talk about what happens if you bend a nail and how to take care of that. So let's go ahead, we'll put a nail in here. All right, and I'm just gonna bend it over. When you find that you have bent a nail like this, it's important that you take the nail out and then start with a new one. The reason being that it's sometimes very difficult to correct a bent nail and get it all the way in properly. Sometimes what can happen is as you're trying to redirect your nail, you can really make a mess of the wood. So usually the best idea is to pull that nail out and start with a fresh one. All right, so to get your nail out, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this hammer. This hammer is called a claw hammer, and there's a special reason. This part of the claw hammer is called the claw. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my claw and I'm going to slip the nail right between those two claws, and then I can grab my hammer and pull and roll it along the piece of wood and it will very easily pull that nail out just like that. Okay, we've got our nail out. Let's grab a new nail and we can go ahead and put that into the wood. Go. 
one more nail to go on this side. We've got a few more for the whole project though. All right, let's get that in. Now that we've got our first side on, we can go ahead and put on our other. So let's get some glue on this side right here. We'll get it inside the dado cut. It's a little easier to nail now that we've got our first piece on because it acts as a platform. It holds that, that base up for us. Now we've got our two sides on. It's time to move on to putting our rails on. These two pieces right here are our rails. Let's dry fit them to make sure they fit. Dry fitting just means to place your piece where it needs to go without using nails or glue. It can help to tell us if we need to make any adjustments to the size and spacing, and also it can show us where we need to put our glue. So let's go ahead, we'll dry fit this that goes right here. You can see that the cutout right here is at the bottom of the rail. And then that, therefore what happens is this little tab that sticks up sits on top of the base, just like that. Okay, now that we know where it goes and we can see that the glue all goes inside of this cutout, we can throw some glue on that and then nail it on. Let's get make sure we get enough glue in the entire area of our cutout here. We actually talk about exactly what type of joint this is going to make in our birdhouse video. All right, now that I've got glue on there, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to place my rail in the spot it needs to go. I'm going to put my bird feeder, turn it over on edge, and then grab some nails. It looks like we need four nails for this part. Awesome. We've got our one rail on. Now what we can do is just flip it over and repeat exactly what we just did. Let's get some glue on the other rail. All right, let's get this other rail on. We've got enough glue on there. Everything fits all right. We got four more nails. Okay, we've got both of our rails on. We need to remember to install our acrylic windows. If we don't do this now, we won't be able to get one of them in later. These right here are our acrylic windows. We need to carefully peel off this protective film. I love doing this. It's very satisfying. We'll go ahead and take them off just like this. Peel them off. We should have nice clean windows. All right, let's do the other one now. Now what we can do is we can take these acrylic windows and we can slide them right inside these slots. Just like that. Now that we have our acrylic windows in, we are gonna use the nails and glue to attach the larger fixed roof to the top of our sides. Be sure when you attach this, the pre-drill holes for the hinges right here are positioned at the top of the feeder, like this. You can see those holes right there. 
Those are those pre-drilled holes that we want at the top. Let's take this roof off. We'll get some glue inside these cutouts and then we can nail it together. Now what we can do is nail on this larger roof. Okay, again, remember these pre-drilled holes have to be at the top of the bird feeder. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that on. Make sure it fits inside the slots, good. It's a good idea to make sure that the top of the roof is sitting all the way down on the top of those sides. So you, you can even push it down a little bit and that'll make sure it sits down there. Okay, so now that we've got our roof sitting on top, we can put our nails in. So it looks like we need four nails for this part. Get them over here. Okay, before we attach our smaller roof, we're gonna grab our hinges. And we're going to attach them using just two of the screws. So we'll grab our screwdriver, and we can screw in loosely to the screws. So place the tip of the screw inside that pre-drilled hole, and go ahead and screw that down. Just make sure that when you're screwing it down that you don't screw it all the way in. We wanna leave them a little bit loose. Now leaving the screw slightly loose like this makes it much easier to get all of our screws in and it helps us to position our hinge and door in the spot that we want before tightening everything up. We're just gonna loosely put these hinges on. Let's get the other hinge and we'll put that one on too. Get another one on there. Okay, because we put our hinges on first, it'll make it a lot easier to attach that small hinge roof. Okay, I'm gonna take my, my roof here, I'm gonna put it just underneath those hinges. I can flop them down, and now I can grab my remaining screws, match up those holes, and put the screws in. Again, remember, don't screw those screws all the way down. And you'll know exactly why in a minute. All right, I just need one more screw. There it is. Now that we've got all of our eight screws in, we can straighten the smaller roof to be parallel. That just means that the space on either side is the same. Then we're going to tighten all eight screws, just like this. Now we need to make sure that we tighten down these screws, but we don't want to tighten them down too much. If you tighten your screws down too much, we risk either breaking the screws or doing something called stripping the hole. That just makes it so the screws can't hold into the wood anymore. Now that I've tightened all my screws down, I'm going to just test this door. There is a chance that it may not open exactly the way we want it and that just means that we have to adjust our hinges a little bit and we'll get it perfect. Let's test. If the smaller roof does not close properly, loosen those screws and move this smaller roof down 
leaving a slightly bigger gap between the two roofs. Carefully tighten those screws back up and your roof should fit perfectly. Now that we have our feeder almost built, it's time to put our rope on. This right here is our rope. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this end of the rope and tie a knot into it. We need to make sure we tie it really tight though. So what we're gonna do is after tying your knot, we're gonna take our fingers behind the knot and we're gonna pull really tight. We'll pull the rope away from us while gripping onto either side of that knot. And that should leave you with a really nice tight knot. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna feed our rope through the inside of the bird feeder like that. And your knot should be able to hold on so it doesn't come through. Then we're gonna take the other side here and we're gonna feed it from the outside in. And we can pull that all the way out so we have a lot of rope to work with when we tie the knot on the other end. And then I'm gonna put two fingers behind that knot and pull the rope away. Now we can pull that and there we go. Look at that. After the glue begins to dry in about an hour, you can sand out any imperfections and rough edges with the provided sandpaper. Be sure though to sand with the grain. If we sand by following these lines like this, we will end up with a much nicer product. Now sanding across the grain will make it look all scratched up. Like that. Sanding with the grain actually helps to disguise those scratches. So your eye isn't drawn to them because the grain hides them. The bird feeder looks great. From everyone at Build It Yourself Woodworking, thank you so much for spending time with me to build your kit. If you enjoy building this woodworking kit or know somebody else that would enjoy building a woodworking kit too, please visit us at www.buildityourself.ca to see all of our great kits.